Hey. How you doing today? Well, it is Monday. That's right. I, <laughs> oh, I'm laughing. Sorry I said that out loud. We are the Ask Academy. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to be doing some geometry today. So as we look at the geometry, we're going to look in the special section of Chapter 1, Chapter 2, where we're looking specifically today at... Oh, let's see if I can pull that up on my computers. Yes, we're looking... We're beginning our talks today about looking at reasoning and proof. So we're going to be looking at some vocabulary words today that we're going to be talking about, and that is conjecture. Talk to you a little bit about that, what that means. Uh, we're going to look at inductive reasoning and being able to, to look at those two concepts, conjecture and inductive reasoning. And we're going to be throwing in a way to find a counter example as a means by which to disprove things in mathematics. In mathematics, we are, uh, in science, we really don't prove things. We just see, and that's kind of what we're talking about today. We're going to be looking at making conjectures, conjectures, uh, which, if you're uh, taking note, a conjecture is, well, I like to call it kind of an, it's, a, it's, a, it's an educated guess. A conjecture It can be thought of um, as a proven statement that is based on some observations that you've made. So you're going to see some things happening. And once you see that, then you can make a conjecture. You can make an educated statement. It's not proven beyond a shadow of doubt, but it's really just based on some observations that you have seen. And in doing that, that's kind of what we are, that's what we're calling to be inductive reasoning. Is when you find a pattern in those specific uh, uh, instances and cases that you see, and then you're able to write an, a conjecture about that. So inductive reasoning is seeing those patterns and being able to write a conjecture. Okay? So in mathematics, it's really very difficult to prove things. And it's only in math that we do prove things to be true beyond a shadow of a doubt and for all the infinite possibilities that the situation may uh, may have at its disposal. So what I want to do is to talk to you about looking at some patterns like if we see numbers that uh, take on some kind of pattern like the numbers negative 7, negative 21, negative 63, negative 189 and we're able to see those numbers and be able to determine some kind of pattern that those numbers have and be able to then guess hey what would the next number in the pattern be and here we see yeah you see that each one they're taking 7 and multiplying times 3 times 3 times 3 and then, so you can just take 189 and multiply it by 3 those are the kind of things that we're going to be looking at that is pattern recognition you're observing your observation has told you and saw and recognized that pattern you can then make a conjecture that would say something like wow I see the pattern in those numbers as you take the number and you multiply it by 3 to determine what that next number in the pattern would be that's conjecture that's an educated guess as to what you could could uh, could voice as that next pattern, and the direct uh, uh, I'm sorry the indirect reasoning the uh, inductive reasoning is seeing that pattern, recognizing it, and then being able to make that uh, conjecture, voicing that, and so. There are lots of these opportunities they're going to give you uh, to be able to test that, make a conjecture, and be able to see what your point uh, is, is true or not. They're also going to have you look at opportunities where you need to provide a counter 
example. And that counterexample can be something that can disprove. So disproving something in mathematics really isn't that as difficult as proving. Disproving is finding one example that makes the conjecture false. So, for example, if, if someone said, a student makes the following conjecture. A sum of two numbers is always greater than the larger of the two numbers you're adding. So that conjecture was, if I take two numbers and add them together, the sum of those two numbers is always bigger than the larger number of the of the two. I'm telling you that conjecture is false. Can you find and think of a counterexample? It's a little difficult, isn't it? Because that appears to be true at first glance. But if you look further and consider different sets of numbers, like negative numbers. If I add negative 2 and negative 3 together, I get negative 5. Are those two numbers? And does their sum, is that bigger than the larger of the two numbers? No, negative 5 is smaller. It's bigger in its smallness. It's larger in its smallness. No, it's not bigger. So that's a counterexample that disproves that conjecture that you heard me say that any two numbers always add to something larger than the larger of the two numbers. So we're playing with some, some vocabulary. We've looked, at, we've looked at conjecture, we've looked at inductive reasoning, and we've looked at counterexamples and being able to inductively reason that something is true or not. Now, we're going to be talking about reason, and we're going to talk about how to rationalize those things, and then we're going to step uh, into uh, a realm of world where we're actually going to start looking at how to prove statements are true. And so my goal is to be able to make you a stronger and more intelligent arguer so that you can argue with your parents. Hey, don't tell them I said that. But no, you can go and make a, 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 a in, the, in the court of law, you can provide the skills and strategies that I'm going to be introducing you to into helping uh, a jury or a judge see your point of view and be able to uh, trust that it's true. Hey, we are the Ask Academy. And this is our time together here in a world of geometry so that you too can understand, hey, I really just want you to be honest with me. Hey, have a great night. See you tomorrow. Later. We are the Ask Academy.